Hello students, my name is Alok Semwal and I am working as an associate professor, pharmaceutical chemistry, Himachal Institute of Pharmacy, Ponta Sahib. Today, I am going to discuss about the instrumentation of ultraviolet visible spectrophotometer. The instrument used in ultraviolet visible spectroscopy is known as ultraviolet visible spectrophotometer. Spectrophotometers are of two types. First one is single beam spectrophotometer. Second one is double beam spectrophotometer. Single beam spectrophotometer uses single beam of light. While the double beam spectrophotometer uses two beams of light. Now, different parts of single beam spectrophotometer. In single beam spectrophotometer, first part is source of light. Source of light produces electromagnetic radiation. Second part is monochromator. Monochromator is composed of antenslit, dispersion element, and exit slit. Combinedly, this assembly is called as monochromator. Next part is sample holder, which is qubit. Last part of the spectrophotometer is detector. In single beam spectrophotometer, light travels from source to monochromator, then it is incident upon the sample and analyzed by the detector. Now, double beam spectrophotometer contains light source, monochromator, different mirrors, beam splitter, sample holder, reference sample holder and detectors. Different parts of the single beam and double beam spectrophotometers have different works. Light source produces the desired radiation. It may be ultraviolet or visible. The work of monochromator is very complex. Radiation from the source passes through the entrance slit and incident upon the dispersion device. Dispersion device converts the radiation into its constituent wavelengths. Only a single wavelength passes through the exit slit at a time. Then it is incident upon the mirror from where it reflects an incident upon the beam splitter. Beam splitter converts a single beam into two beams. One passes through the sample and second through the reference. Sample cells are qubits. After passing through the sample and reference, both beams are recombined. Detector detects it and further the readout device shows the spectrum of the compound. Now we will discuss sources of ultraviolet radiation. 
in this picture you can see a light source this one is a deuterium lamp sources of ultraviolet radiations are deuterium and hydrogen lamps when deuterium lamp is excited through the electrical energy it produces radiation radiation range of these lamps is between range 160 to 375 nanometer a deuterium lamp is a discharge light source with deuterium sealed in a bulb as it uses a hot cathode to achieve stable and reliable arc discharge approximately 10 second for preheating is required before starting the discharge a deuterium lamp requires a large and complex power supply making it more expensive than a halogen lamp however it is one of the few continuous spectrum light sources that is stable in the ultraviolet range so however the halogen lamp is expensive because it produces a continuous spectrum in the ultraviolet range it is widely used lamp next are sources of visible radiation in this picture you can see two lamps first one is simple tungsten lamp while the second one is tungsten halogen lamp these lamps are used to produce the visible radiation radiation range is more than 350 nanometer a simple tungsten lamp is similar to a normal incandescent lamp a halogen lamp filament heats up and emits light when a current flows through it consequently the bulb containing the filament of a normal incandescent lamp is filled with an inert gas to prevent evaporation of the tungsten halogen lamps are stable over time offer a long service life and are relatively cheap that's why halogen lamps are the most widely used lamps other lamps include xenon lamp which is also called as xenon arc lamp xenon flash lamp and low pressure mercury lamp next part is wavelength selector it is also known as monochromator monochromator is composed of an intense light a collimating lens a dispersing device a focusing lens and exit slit dispersing device are of two types first is prism second one is grating composition of prism is glass quartz and silica nowadays glass is avoided because it absorbs the electromagnetic radiation composition of grating is aluminum here the dispersing power of grating is greater than the prism next part is sample holder qubits are used as an sample holders composition of qubit is quartz or fused silica here in this picture you can see qubits these are math cells math cells are of exactly same composition glass is avoided because it absorbs electromagnetic radiation next is selection of solvent 
different types of solvents are used in ultraviolet visible spectroscopy however the solvent selection have some criteria these criteria include the solvent should completely solubilize the sample at the desired concentration the solvent should be ultraviolet transparent at the measuring wavelength it means solvent should not absorb at the measuring wavelength suppose that you are working at 350 to 400 nanometer then you have to select the solvent which solubilizes the sample at the desired concentration and it does not absorb in between 350 to 400 nanometer solvent should be non reactive in nature different solvent used and their wavelength of absorption are water 191 nanometer for ether 215 nanometer for methanol 203 nanometer for ethanol 204 nanometer chloroform 237 nanometer carbon tetrachloride 265 nanometer for benzene 280 nanometer and for tetrahydrofuran 220 nanometer